Hey YouTube, it's Tams the Wicked Witch. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all well, staying safe and keeping yourself as occupied indoors while we're on lockdown. I'd like to thank all the new subscribers to the channel and um, thank you all for watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. It really helps. Please give us a like for the videos. And uh, if there's any videos that you'd like to see, always drop a comment below for anything, not just that, any, any comments at all, please um, feel free to comment away. So today's video is how to set up an altar. Now, please remember I'm not Wiccan. I'm a pagan witch. I am eclectic and solitary unless I'm doing a little bit of ritual work with my mum who is exactly the same as me. Um, pagan, witch, a little bit eclectic, solitary. Um, we work with the old magic, the old ways of witchcraft. Um, I'm not Wiccan at all. I do sometimes um, borrow bits and pieces um, of other witchcraft and pagan um, ways and magical ways I do do that which is the eclectic um, the eclecticness in me um, of course but you know at the end of the day I'm not Wiccan so you'll notice if you're Wiccan they do tend to have set rules and things so in this video we're not doing we're not doing a Wiccan setup because I'm not okay so the way that I set up my altars is I set them up how I want <laughs> it's my altar um, and I set them up how I feel. I use the crystals that I want to use. I use the tools that I want to use. Everything is about free, free will. Do as you will. As long as you're not harming anybody, you can do what you want, can't you? So I'm going to put my fingers in my ears a minute. I'm not puggling. I've got vertigo and I've got cotton wool in them. So sorry. I go a bit lopsided. I've got positional vertigo, which is really fun with all this stress. Stress makes it worse. And um, obviously <laughs> that's why I've got cotton wool continuously in my ears. So sorry if you see me poking around. I'm trying to hear myself. So behind is my one of my main altars. Um, and on here we've got animal skulls. We've got goddess and god statues. We've got animals, we've got crow feathers, we've got things that represent certain goddesses and gods. We've got a farme, our magical knife, um, our magical um, blade. Some people have a sword, some people have a knife, some people have like the bow and knife. We have our wand, one of many. Um, this has actually been made properly, but I actually have a stick as well that I found on the floor, which I absolutely love. I use that a lot. So um, we also have antler. We've got seashells. We've got all sorts of things. We've got black candles. We've got deer skull at the back. Um, all kinds of things. So when setting up sacred space, it's basically what you know your sacred space if you've got a really small house and we really have a small house sorry Arthur will you come here please you're not going outside come on daddy's washing the garden down if they get out there and they get soaked with the hose and then trying to get them dry they're black labradors aren't you come and say hello come and say hello here comes the other one now they're so nosy right sorry back to the subject um so sacred space we all need our sacred space to work and obviously if you haven't got a big house um here comes teddy um if you haven't got a big house you need to just you know utilize the space that you do have so in the front room which is what we're in now in my front room i have this call this was a tenner in a charity shop and my husband stained it and i've got my my kind of mainish altar on here I've got a shelf over there, which is all Morrigan's stuff and all her stuff on a shelf. I've got a money altar, which is on another shelf. I've got a small altar over there, which is just like a um, like a health shelf, if you will, for especially for the minute. I've got things in the back garden. Anywhere that I've got space, I will make little altars and offerings. Up on my shelf up here, I have my Egyptian altar and Baphomet. Um, because I keep that separate as I do Morrigan. Morrigan is on the main altar, but it's only one statue of her. She's over in the corner. Um, you can't see her, I don't think. Um, I, I don't mix Morrigan um, when I'm actually working with her. It'll be either out in the garden or on that shelf over there. So everything's kind of where I want it to be. So you obviously 
if this, if you're new and you're just stepping onto your pagan path um, and you're just finding goddesses and gods or maybe you haven't even found um, found your goddesses and gods yet who you're going to be working with um, and you're unsure the, I think one of the best ways to start on an altar is to have something that represents the elements and of course the elements earth air fire water and spirit or ether as it's called so if you had a pentagram or a pentacle or something that, or you just make it this is just made from clay um, if you had a pentacle which you could place um, in the middle and you could have something to represent you know the elements going round it's, it'd be nice if you could do it as of um, the directions obviously um, if you could face south south and you know so obviously earth earth air fire and water for obviously earth you could have stones or you could have some graveyard dirt um, or some pebbles um, for air you could have incense you could have feathers um, something that represents that usually the color yellow for air earth brown or sometimes green um, obviously fire is a candle um, or again you could have some incense round um, and that's red uh, the colors red um, and water would be a blue blue or a pale blue um, color you could have the seashells um, you could have a bowl of moon water you could have a, a bowl of water with some sacred blessed salt in um, you can have all sorts of things so to set up a, a small place to start if you're unsure of your goddesses and gods you're not too sure quite what it is you're actually going to be going to be following on the path when you first step onto the path it's very it's very daunting and there's a lot thrown at you and you're trying to read all the books and you're not quite sure um you know you're not quite sure of yourself and i do think that um the elements the elements obviously um are a great are a great focal point to start the altar with and then you can build around it now even if you only have um a box that's the size of a diary just that size and that's all you've got and you've got to keep it hidden maybe you're not you know maybe you can't tell anybody what you're doing maybe you don't want it on show maybe you really don't have that any space for it to be on show you could just have a little box and you could open the box and you could have something to represent even if it's just colors you could get four stones or five stones and have the you know the, the elements so earth air fire water and spirit um and you could paint on the stones um they obviously have symbols and if you just go onto google and look up the symbols for earth air fire water and spirit you'll find them um i wish i'd bought a little diagram now i didn't think of that you could paint on little stones you could have them in the box you could have a small water cloth or you could if you was doing it on a table you could have a big water cloth you can choose what colors you're going to work with you can have candles you can have your incense you can have crystals any crystals you like, um, whatever you feel, what you want to work with. And if you're new to crystals, one of the best things to start off with is clear quartz. Grab an amethyst. You can buy tumble stones if it's so cheap. A lot of eBay shops at the minute in this lockdown situation are still selling. A lot of the smaller shops, they do it from their homes. So you are still able to purchase things. And things like tumbled stones and crystals are still you know are still quite cheap and easy to get hold of so you can get yourself a little crystal collection if you've got some seashells um you don't have to have big fancy candles you could have tea lights um incense is ever so cheap obviously if you're just working from the box then you know don't put anything alight in the box um you'd have to do it round it and then make sure that that was kept separate when the box went away you could draw um, a masculine and feminine for the divine feminine and the divine masculine if you're not a hundred percent sure of who who it is yet that's you know going to be calling to you or appealing to you you may have just stepped on or you may never wish to work with a goddess and god some people don't they work with earth spirits they work with nature spirits the fairy world um there's there's so much there's so much you can do with sacred space it's your space it's nobody else's they can't tell you what to do on it um some people put their paintings on there some people have their books of shadows as a vocal point like the, you know the centerpiece um and they have it open on their where they're working they have the you know you can do anything you can do anything you want animal skulls um you can have your statues feathers you could do um you could make things from clay and um, have those things on there um really anything you want your main tools for an altar if you've got the space are of course 
your broom. My little broom is just here. My shelving units are all packed with goods at the minute, sorry, because we've had to move everything to make a little gym. So this is all usually just books and the odd herbs that I might be working with. All the other things are in behind me. Everything's in drawers and kept away and just the, just the little altar area on top. Um, yeah, you could, um, I've forgotten where I was. Your main tools, sorry, your main tools, obviously your Beeson broom, your broomstick. Um, and if you haven't got room for a big one, you could buy, whoops, buy or make a small one. I have a small one. This was like three pound from my local witchy occult shop. Um, you can you can do all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be big and glamorous. I mean, you can make that. If you had some brush, some dry brush and a stick, and you've got a bit of twine, you could easily make that and put little bits around it and put feathers attached to it. Um, yeah, so your main bits, you need your be some broom, large or small, doesn't matter. Um, you need, and a f when I say you need, you don't really need, but these are the witchy tools. You're a farm a, your wand, which can just be a stick or it can be a fancy one, um, a cauldron. Do you really need a cauldron? When I'm doing stuff outside, I use the cauldron. It's out there now. It's not on here. I have a miniature one on the Morrigan shelf. It's this big. Um, you've got crystals. You've got some feathers. Um, do you really need any of this? You know, you could just have four stones and something in the center. And um, that could still be a magical space. It doesn't have to all be big and expensive and elaborate. Um, you know, I found, well, I say my dad found the, um, the antler and um, found the deer skull and uh, that's where I've acquired those from. We've got fox skulls, my dad's family as well, when he's walking in Epping Forest in Essex, doing his walks and he finds me all kinds of bits. I've made wands from sticks, I've made pentacles from sticks, pentagram hangings from sticks, you could make your own broom. Um, yeah, you don't need big expensive items, um, but to have the sacred space where when you're working on a spell, you can set up and as I say, even if it's just from opening up a box, and sitting with the box in a corner of a room where you feel quite relaxed, that could be your that could be your sacred space, you know. If you're lucky and you've got loads of room, you can sort of have all sorts of things going on. Um, usually with sacred space, you would sage, sage the area. Um, if you're setting up, sage your space and uh, get yourself all set up, and then you would have make do a little ritual. Um, bless your area you could put salt you could use bless salt I've got videos in the playlist below if you want to check them out of them um, you know things with salts and sands and things like that um, to use um, yeah you can really have you could dry your herbs out near to your altar everything can be done on the altar you know and it doesn't matter how big or small you just have to try and work with it um, we had a really big house and then we moved to a really small house. And for me, it's been a struggle because I'm somebody that likes to spread out. You know, I've got witchy books, well over a hundred. I can't get everything on the shelves and I do get frustrated. You know what? It's not the end of the world. I say to myself, don't be greedy. You just have to try and make do with what you've got. So you just have to kind of condense down a little bit, you know, if you can't get every ornament on the, you know, you don't want it all cluttered and horrible. And obviously the more clutter, the more dust. <laughs> so yeah, you, you've got your sacred space and, and that's yours. You can put some of your artwork on there. Um, once you know, um, once you know yourself a little bit more on your pagan path and you understand it a little bit more and you start working with various goddesses and gods or one or whatever however it turns out to be um you might even end up with you know a little heap of them you know um all sorts of things can happen as the as the time goes on on the pagan path and it's really exciting as it, as you you know as it happens you may start to add more and more which is what you know to your altar you may have pictures of this goddess or this god and and or this spirit and then there's animal guides and then there's spirit totems animal totems and and you know uh yeah it's just uh you can add and do whatever you want to do as i say obviously if you are wiccan then you kind of do follow more stricter rules and that's where wiccan books come um into play um scott cunningham i always think that scott cunningham's books and i still own both uh, solitary witchcraft and living um living wicca Scott Cunningham books are absolutely fantastic and I've got them I'm not Wiccan but they've got such good stuff in them um, 
and yeah really really brilliant books and um yeah if you're if you're really stuck um as you're stepping onto your path and you do think that wicker is right for you then those books are really good um for me you know i've just got them books i have i've read quite a lot of wiccan books um but as i say i am just a pagan witch solitary a little bit eclectic and uh, I do what I wish to do. So I keep my altars separate, my Egyptian altars up there and my and Baphomet. Um, so it's a little bit of a Philema vibe going on, but I'm not a Thelemite. Um, but, you know, something happened with this and that's, you know, maybe I'll do a video about that one day. But um, so I have that going on up there. Altar here, Canunus, um, Canunus, Green Man, Gaia, Mother Earth and Morrigan and the Crone are all on here. Baba Yeager. Bubba Yeager's over there. Um, she's kind of a separate being for me, Bubba Yeager. I have Medusa and Zeus separately. Um, they were my first goddess and god when I was 13, 14. I didn't even know I was pagan. Um, I was obsessed with Zeus and the lightning and I was obsessed with Medusa. Even though I'm, you know, I'm not, I haven't got any snakes or anything. I was obsessed with Medusa. I loved her. So they were kind of like my first, my first goddess and god, you know. Um, and then Morrigan's got separate shelf. Canunos has got another shelf. I've got a money altar with Canunos on. Um, and then there's the outside space um, where I've got a fairy, fairy, um, fey altar um, and nature spirit, small altar and something in my front garden as well. So there's lots of things you can do. You don't have to have a mansion. You don't have to be rolling in money. None of this needs to cost money. You can make lots of bits and pieces. So yeah i hope this helps a little bit um i think it's quite stressful when you're first starting out or you're unsure what to put on your altar is yours you know is your altar put on what your altar what you want to do and what how you feel if you like that stone you see on the floor when you're having your walk pick it up bring it home clean it put it on your altar if you want to put those feathers or turn those feathers into a smudge um, or have a big display of feathers on your altar, then do that. Do what you want to do because it's in, it's your own intuition and your own things. You get to know yourself. If you like something, work with it. If you like that stick, use it as a wand because, to be honest, my stick that I found is the best wand. It really is. If you like working with amethyst, if you like working with quartz crystal, rose quartz, um, you know, labradorite, any whatever you want to you work with what you want and you have those crystals on your altar and uh you know i have a lot of cinnamon on all my altars because as you know um cinnamon's a big protection and it's cinnamon sticks i love cinnamon sticks and i have a lot of rosemary a lot of dried rosemary around um i also have pine cones and things like that i'd love to have a seasonal altar on a big six foot table and every every for every sabbat change it you know so like i mean i can just imagine obviously for Samhain on the 31st of october i do this anyway because of the halloween decorations are all over my table but I, if i could just keep it up like that i can't because we eat our dinner up it and stuff but if i could have the whole table and i would have every single sabbat i mean for you all oh it would be superb but you know i don't have a very big house so you got to do what you can do. You got to make use of the space you've got. And if at the end of the day you've only got space to put something that big, you could get a little bowl shaped like a leaf. You could represent the elements in it. You could do a tiny little clay figure of a goddess and god, or whatever it is, your earth spirit, or or a, you know a spirit guide you want to work with, whatever you want. And you could have all that in a little bowl on the side. And I'm sure all of us could find space for that and have one candle next to it. And that's your sacred space. It doesn't need to be doesn't need to be all glamorous and you know expensive you can have whatever you like so i hope this helps a little bit if there's anything i haven't covered tell me below maybe i'll try and like add a part two or something um again enjoy yourselves with your sacred space make it your own do what you will enjoy it and uh, stay safe everybody and i'll see you all soon with some more videos remember to like subscribe see you later on tada